What's up guys, Jordan here from Show Me Vegas and this is my first time staying at the Fabulous Flamingo. It's also going to be the last time I ever stay at the Fabulous Flamingo and in this video I'm going to explain. So I booked the go room here at the Flamingo. This is the cheapest room in the house. And I booked it knowing full well that this was the cheapest room in the house. Now the Flamingo is absolutely steeped in tradition and it has probably the most history of any hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. I was excited to stay here. I mean, look at me. I've got my pink hoodie and my white hat on today. I was ready to stay at the Flamingo. And then I got into this room. This is the dirtiest hotel room I've ever been in in my entire life. You know that room in The Hangover 2 when the guys wake up in a hotel room in Bangkok? Phil, I think it's happened again. Yeah, this room might be worse than that one. There is no way on God's green earth I'm going to allow my skin to touch any part of this room, whether it's the soles of my feet on this disgusting carpet, or whether it's my hand on the shower wall or the bathroom counter, or the desk for that matter. Absolutely not. I'm staying fully clothed for the duration of this day. You want to hear a story? Sure. So the experience started as it does with all Caesars hotels with the most horrendous check-in procedure on planet Earth. If you haven't been to a Caesars property in a while, you should know that they've essentially replaced all of their front desk staff with robots. That's right, they have check-in kiosks and they try to funnel about 99% of their guests through these kiosks. Now I was here earlier in the day and there was a mile long line. I knew there was no chance I was gonna get an early check-in. So I just pre-checked in online and checked my bag with the bell desk and I went about my day. Shortly after four o'clock, I got the email that says your room is ready. So I headed back to the front desk and I went to the express check-in kiosk because guess what? The line at the front desk was now about two miles long. The kiosk printed my room keys as they do at Caesars Properties and it gave me a little slip of paper that had my room assignment and some directions, directions to my room. First of all, surely Caesars, we can do better than this. I know that you can't replace the face-to-face -face experience and that's why you probably shouldn't even try. But when you're giving directions to a room, you probably should orient the directions based on how the person might perceive left and right when they're facing the front desk. Now to be fair, the directions do say the spa elevators, but having never stayed here before, I didn't know where the spa was and I didn't know where the spa elevators were. But all of this could have been avoided if I'd simply checked in with someone face-to-face -face and they could have just pointed me in the direction of the elevators to begin with but I digress. I find the spa elevators and I head up to my room. It's right near the elevator, so immediately I'm pleased. And now I'm not. So I put the key up against the electronic lock. I unlock the door and open the door to find within .001 seconds I'm hit with an unmistakable smell from my childhood. Now as a kid for several years, I bowled in a league every Tuesday afternoon. That creep can roll, man. And I know exactly what it smells like when a building is completely permeated with cigarette smoke. I'm telling you this room smells like there are 50 ashtrays sitting in it right now, and yet there's not a single one. I called the front desk, I asked them if this was supposed to be a non-smoking room. They asked me if I'd like somebody to come up and spray the room. It's pretty apparent where the cigarette smoke smell is coming from. If you look at the corners of this room, they're yellow. 
these are tar stains right here. I mean, this is absolutely disgusting. This didn't happen just once or twice. The best part is they had the gall to put a note in here, a little sign that says, I'll be fined $500 if I smoke in this room. That's when I decided to check out the room in a little closer detail, and man, I tell you, I wish those images that I showed you earlier could do it justice. It's not that the room is just dirty, it's that this is the dirtiest hotel room I've ever been in in my entire life. Every surface in the entire room is stained. The carpet has cigarette burns in it. The carpet is sticky to the touch. The walls are literally dirty everywhere. Wallpaper is peeling and gouged. And the grout and caulking in the bathroom is about the most disgusting thing you're ever gonna see in a hotel room. Regardless, as I mentioned, I'm only here for less than 12 hours. I probably was only going to get about three hours of sleep in this room tonight. I guess I'll just make sure and not remove any articles of clothing at any time while I'm in this room, and I'll just have to make do with it. Now, as bad as this room is, this hotel does still have a lot of cool things going for it. I mentioned the history. The casino is a great place to hang out. It does have one of our favorite steakhouses in town and Bugsy and Myers downstairs on the casino floor. And just last year, we saw Mr. Las Vegas himself, Wayne Newton, perform here at the Flamingo. Just know that if you book a go room, you very well might find something as bad as this. Anyway, it's about 10.30 p.m. I got back to the hotel and the check-in line was finally down, so I went to the front desk to see if there was anything we could do about this. And uh, as expected, there were no rooms in the entire property that they could move me to. They are completely sold out. This room is what I get. I asked the front desk agent if there was anything else they could do and they did agree to waive my resort fee. So, still on the hook for paying for the room, but I at least don't have to pay the ridiculous resort fee on top of it. To top it all off, it's getting kind of late for somebody who needs to leave the hotel before four o'clock in the morning to catch a flight. And out this window right here is the pool area and beyond that is the Link Promenade and the loudest mariachi music you've ever heard in your life is blaring out there. Probably not gonna matter because I don't think I'm gonna get a whole lot of sleep in this room anyway. So when I showed up here on property, this video was supposed to be, what's it like to stay at Flamingo in 2023? And I thought it was gonna be a fun, entertaining and informative video. It did, I hope, turn out to be informative, not necessarily in a good way. Hey, I guess there's a reason some people call this hotel the Dirty Bird because I just found out the hard way. If you did find this video informative, please do give it a thumbs up. I normally say here if you liked this video, but I don't know what there is to like about it necessarily. I sure didn't like anything about it. But if you found it informative, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel. If you want to know more about the Flamingo, I do still intend to do a complete walkthrough tour of this property. I've already filmed it, so I'll put it out, hopefully highlighting some of the better aspects of the Flamingo. Subscribe to the channel and also turn on your notification bell so you don't miss that when it does come out. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope the next video can be a little bit better than this. We'll see you in that next video because there's always more for us to show you on Show Me Vegas.